So I want to back up and talk about that because now we're in a situation where it's maintenance treatment in the second line setting and how you make that decision to continue going on with the, the maintenance bevacizumab. So, and, and versus do you change to another drug if you have just a partial response? And so as a physician, when I'm considering maintenance treatment in that situation, um, uh, somebody has a complete response or a partial response, I think it's very reasonable. If somebody has progressive disease, mm -hmm. then you might make a switch to a different chemotherapy option. But now we have another option, which is PARP inhibitors. If somebody has a BRCA1 or 2 mutation, um, that's, an, that's an option. And it could be an option that opens up in other situations. Mm. So this gets into the whole situation of what's maintenance, what's treatment. And what's treatment. As a patient, what's your, do you feel like that's difficult to understand or piece those two apart? No, I mean, they kind of overlap a little bit, too, because I'm doing, like you said, a PARP inhibitor. I'm on one of a PARP inhibitor now, mm. and it's treatment, but it's also maintenance mm -hmm. for me, right? Well, you're on it for treatment, but you've definitely responded, and so it is kind of It's a, kind of a like treatment now because right. I am doing so well right. on it. So, yeah, it kind of overlaps a little bit. I agree with you 100%. I think it's hard for some people to use that out. So if somebody has a complete response um, in that situation, and even partial response, some people lump that together under the maintenance. Other people say, well, hey, wait, you have a partial response. You're treating cancer and that's treatment, mm -hmm. or even if you have a complete response, you're gonna, you still have cancer there because we know it's gonna come back mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so quickly. That's still treatment, so the lines are blurred. That's very um, blurred, yeah. But they're important distinctions because some of the FDA approvals for PARP inhibitors are treatment approvals and others are maintenance approvals. Um, I like the way that you think about it, though. I think that's good. Mm -hmm. So you had a partial response to chemotherapy, so we kept on the bevacizumab, for quite some time, and um, you were tolerating that well. You had some issues with for blood pressure. For about six or seven months, yeah, blood pressure was a little yeah. high on that. I think that's why we stopped it. Well, actually, you progressed. Progressed, enough, but we, and then we were, and we actually had had to work a little bit to get your blood pressure under control. But we were at a point where it wasn't, it, it was stable, so we mm -hmm. were okay. And now forward. it's under control. I'm not, I'm not on blood pressure medications or anything right, right now, which is probably awesome. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> Explaining how PARP inhibitors work can be pretty confusing, so I'll try to okay. <laughs> try my All right, best. it is. So the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes are involved in DNA repair pathways, and there's a whole bunch of different DNA repair pathways, and they're involved in the most efficient ones with our double-stranded breaks. The PARP inhibitor is involved in single-stranded breaks. So the whole idea here is if you block off um, DNA repair with because somebody has a germline mutation mm -hmm. in BRCA1 or 2, or they even have a tumor mutation, a somatic mutation, the DNA won't repair itself as well when it's subjected to injury from chemotherapy or radiation, so forth. And so it's more likely um, for that cancer cell to die when it's exposed to that treatment. When you add a PARP inhibitor on top of, of, of that BRCA1 or 2 mutation, then it creates a situation where now you lose your other DNA, another DNA pathway repair. Oh, interesting, right? okay. So you lead the, from, if you have a single-stranded break and you can't repair that, then you're more likely to have these double-stranded breaks. And if you're um, BRCA1 and 2 deficient, then that's more likely to lead this cancer cell toward a, um, a death pathway, mm -hmm. essentially. So that's how it works, but it's, it's much more complicated than that. There's all these other um, enzymes um, and proteins involved in DNA repair. The other way these drugs work is called PARP trapping. So trapping? Trapping. trapping okay. You heard me right. T-R-A-P-P-I-N-G. Okay. So when um, the um, DNA is under the process of repair and the PARP enzyme is on the DNA repairing it, if you have a PARP inhibitor, it traps it there um, on the DNA so that no repair can happen. So mm. sometimes the stronger the PARP trapping is, the more, one of the thoughts is these drugs can be more effective. We haven't seen that clinically, hmm. but that's another mechanism of repair. And mm -hmm. then quite okay. frankly, I think there's probably another way that this drug works that we don't fully understand because we are seeing that benefit in the all-comer population.